Good morning. It is another beautiful sunny day here. <laughs> I wonder when I'll stop saying that. We've been really lucky with the weather. Um, I thought it's about time I finally did another tour of what's going on in the garden. I didn't really do one in January because there wasn't too much going on, um, but I will show you today. I've also got my lovely friend Annie here with me, so we're going to be doing a bit of work in the garden. She's a keen gardener too, and can't really do much in the garden in the UK at the moment so I think she's really enjoying having her hands in the soil which is great for me because my garden's getting more weeding done um, but I'll head down now and show you what's going on and what's growing. So I'm down at the bottom where I usually start, here's Annie working hard <laughs> um, and this is a little spot we're going to work on today because I've definitely abandoned here, it's a lot of deadheading and weeding but the calendula has just been amazing all winter long um, giving lots of colour to the garden and there's loads of seeds to collect so we'll do that um, my bay trees died <laughs> but I think along here we're gonna find some little treats because I planted a lot of bulbs last year and I'm starting to see them popping up there's even some daffs over here So this is bed number one, it is in need of some TLC, but again full of the calendula and I've got some beetroot that's really struggling and then the Felicia uh, green manure growing down the middle, but I think what I'm going to do is maybe dig up, I've put in some onion seeds down here as well um, and they, they've really struggled so I think I'm going to dig out what I can find and then I'll chop in the green manure and just dig it all over and start again here. Um, I think just everything's struggled a bit with the lack of water and the heat of the winter. I should have probably watered a bit more, but we will get a watering system in soon. Um, there's a few garlics in here and then my peas struggled a lot as well. A few of them died off and I'm not really too sure why, but it was at the roots that they seem to be dying, um, not at the roots, but the, the bottom of the stem near to the ground. It seemed to rot a bit. I don't know if it was from the frost or an animal or because I'd put hay there or something, but yeah, need to start again. I've got some some um, seedlings we planted yesterday. So I was hoping to have really early peas and they did start podding and we've got a few flowers, but um, yeah, not, not too happy. <laughs> I've started making a nice little wicker wall here out of the uh, uh, grapevines we've been cutting down so hopefully that'll define the bed a bit better for me to weed <laughs> and then there's a few cabbages just here that were actually trying to go to seed one of them I chopped off the other day um, so yeah very very stressed garden with this lack of water I'll take you down to the bottom of bed too. So again, not too much going on in here. The mizuna's stressed and all gone to flower, but the bees absolutely love it. So I'm happy with that. It's a really beautiful <laughs> flower. I did have some spinach in here. That's just spinach this year just does not want to grow. So the one that's left, I'm going to dig up and put in a pot in the shade and see if that helps. And then I've got a few cabbages um, that I grew from seed. And I haven't weeded this bed in a long time and you can see that even the weeds are struggling to grow which is a sign for me that 
yeah, it's, a, it's not the best growing conditions. I have mulched quite heavily, so that might be helping. But um, yeah, there's a few tiny leaks here as well. I may definitely need some water today. And then my broccoli is going well, so I'm quite pleased with those. They were plug plants and they seem pretty strong. So I'll probably be able to eat some of that now. And then these cabbages, they're kind of doing okay. They got attacked by caterpillars. Um, but I know cabbages do take a really long time to grow. I don't know why they sort of fall over like this. Um, it's just that one I think that's fallen over. Yeah, cabbages soon. And then bed number three. Um, we have actually been getting a little something from, so I've got some lettuces here, they're really small because I uh, picked the outer leaves yesterday. This bed definitely needs some weeding. Um, and then it's full of onions, so I've been using some of the onion greens uh, for salads and things like that. Eating salad in the winter because it's so warm for lunch, so uh, I've got a few potatoes under the hay here. But yeah, this needs a lot of weeding, but yeah, the onions are growing really well, so I'm really happy with that because we had a lot of onions last year as well, and they lasted us ages once I stored them. We eat a lot of onions, so yeah, this bed's doing all right. And then this is bed number four, which is mostly my garlic bed, and that is looking really happy. I'm hoping that the cloves won't be too small because of the uh, the lack of rain but um, we shall see. I oh, will get on to watering them. There's a little bit of uh, fasolia here. In fact I think one has gone to flower. I oh, know that's not a fasolia flower. I don't think. I think that's a weed. <laughs> Yeah, they, one has flowered and they have really beautiful flowers that the bees love. Um, and then I've got a few shallots in here. And then my turnips, some have stressed and gone to seed. But again, they're beautiful and you can eat them. Fry them up. And then some of the turnips are quite small, <laughs> some are getting bigger. This one's happy. I just think they're the cutest vegetable. Like a little cartoon character. <laughs> Uh, this bed five, which is pretty much completely abandoned at the moment, needs a lot of work. I've done a bit of a um, no-dig bed over here with cardboard underneath, but um, I think the hay I've been using has a lot of seeds in, so I think I'm just going to take it off. And then I've got some manure from the neighbour. And then there's just a bit of Felicia in here again. I feel like I'm saying the name wrong, but I'm pretty sure I'll put the, the name on the screen. And then I've got two blueberry bushes that are just starting to bud. So very excited about that. But yeah, this is a bed to be made ready for some seedlings to go in. And then this is the bed me and my mum started working on when she was here. This was completely covered in weeds like it is in the middle. We've left um, here some of the vetch because that's really good for the soil rather than leaving it bare. And then I've got some broad beans in here, some peas here, and then there's some um, onions and leeks in the middle. Um, I've just put some onion bulbs in, and then these are some leeks I grew from seed. And I've got um, some that we're doing in cluster, because Annie was telling me she'd heard Charles Dowding say, if you grew them like this, and then when you get the stronger ones you pull those out and then the smaller ones will grow so you kind of get a succession of leeks and then I have done a few of them in little rows to see how they grow and see which ones work best for us. This is just another abandoned bed that needs um, yeah, getting ready for spring planting. Again I've put cardboard and hay just at the end to suppress the weeds and I'll just put this hay in the uh, compost or something. Um, Hopefully the heat will kill any more seeds in there. Uh, but yeah, this one just needs work. And then this is the final bed down here. Um, this fennel is from last summer and I just chopped back the dead bits and let it grow again and we've been having, eating. Oh, bless you, Frankie. Um, yeah, we've been eating some of the fresh fennel. I don't really like the bulbs, <laughs> but I like this and the, I just love the flowers and the seeds. 
so we'll let that grow big and go to uh, flower again. Uh, this is my asparagus bed and they keep popping the heads up and then I don't know if it's the frost is killing them back so I've got six plants in here and um, this will be well I planted them in like the autumn of last year this will be their second year coming up um, so yeah not too sure well what they're gonna do this, they grew really well like quite big and then they're just dying back and then trying again <laughs> so we'll see uh, some sorrel that's still from last year the sage is really struggling but I think that's normal over winter I'm not sure if I should cut it back or whether that would kill it let me know if you know what I should do with this whether it needs a hard prune or just leave it to till it starts going green again another little sorrel oh poor lemon tree <laughs> it's really not like the cold it's definitely colder in this part of the land than up by the house so our orange trees at the top are doing better so I'm gonna see how this recovers um, and then I might get another lemon tree and keep it in a pot by the house um, I've got some more cabbages here slowly growing cabbages are slow growers um, I've put quite a lot of potash down on the soil if you're wondering why there's quite a strange color because we've been having the fires and this is really good for the soil and some plants really like it <clears throat> and then these are, I think there's onion and leek here. These were some plug plants I bought. That's Frankie digging. <laughs> um, oh, there's definitely red onions, but I can't remember if it's leeks or white onions <laughs> behind. Um, but yeah, they're doing quite well. And then these are the walking Egyptian onions that Gary gave us. And he's, I'll show you up by the house. He gave us a load of other really cool plants. So I'll show you what we've got. Um, but yeah, they seem to be doing quite happily. I uh, cannot wait to see them all growing up. I've been eating a little bit of the greens because you can eat them too. And then I think it's in their second year they do much better and then they, they start doing their, their walking. <laughs> but yeah, really cool to have some perennials. It's definitely something I want to add more of to the garden. So we've got the asparagus and now these. So there's some more bits to show you up at the house which I'll show you later but I really want to go and give Annie a hand with this bed so I'm gonna get to work and then I will film what's going on at the top, what I've got, um, what seeds I've got growing um, and then we've got a bit of a, a bed up there too but yeah I'm gonna go do some weeding. So here's where me and Annie got up to with clearing this part of the garden. It looks so much better um, and I can't wait to add a few more bits to it and the calendula are all looking so much brighter now there's less <laughs> seed heads left in there. Um, and I haven't shown you that Yuan finally 
was able to get to finishing all the vines along here so hopefully they're going to grow really well this year and I will take you up to see what we've got growing up at the beds by the house So this is the bed up by the house. This was our tomato forest in the summer. We've still got these amazing treasure flowers. These have done so well in this climate all through the year. They're always, they didn't struggle in the summer. They've been fine through the winter. Yeah, just amazing. We've got lots of pansies starting to come through up here. And then this is all oregano that's just spreading. And we've got thyme here and a little orange tree so you can see it looks a bit happier than the one um, down in the vegetable garden. So I've started a bit of a kitchen garden here of things that we quickly want to grab for when we're you know making lunch or something so some lettuces again they're quite small because I've been <laughs> picking them slowly um, hoping they're going to get a bit bigger with a bit more water and some chives here and then that's my plan for here. I'll weed and then add more things like herbs and uh, fresh greens that you just want to quickly grab and put in a sandwich. Uh, a bit more thyme here. This garlic is the very first garlic I planted when we uh, arrived here in December 2020 um, and it grew really well and then it died back and I'd forgotten where it was planted so I didn't find it all and then they all just started shooting up so they've come up so I'm intrigued to see how they are this year there's a few more hidden in here this all needs a bit of weeding but I've started here and put in a few peas trying a few different support structures because my one last year didn't work too well um, and then I was gonna see if I could try and get these two to kind of interlace around this one <laughs> I don't know if it'll work but we'll see and just some parsley that's been doing quite well through the winter too. Got a bit dry from a lack of water. I've got some new ones coming here. Um, there's a pansy peeping through over there. Some more there. I love pansies. They're edible as well so you can pop them in your salads and in your gin and tonic. <laughs> um, got a few things that are doing really well over here by the cabin because it gets more shade um, and because it's close to our IBC they get more water and um, so this is a type of geranium that's really good for against mosquitoes my one nasturtium I've really struggled to grow them here and um, they grew really well in our allotment in Wales and it all died back and I was like no <laughs> but um, some little seeds have come again this is the only one that's ever survived so we'll see how that goes and then these are billy button flowers and I planted them like probably about nine months ago and they've just been so slow and just I uh, really hope I get some flowers from them that would be amazing we've got this jasmine growing really happily up here I'm gonna try and propagate it so if anyone has any jasmine propagation tips please let me know in the comments I'm going to try that in the next month or so and this is the only place I found mint has grown really well again I think the shade and getting a bit more water it's really struggled elsewhere um, so yeah just a few little bits here to cheer up the cabin and I'm going to put some sunflowers in here so I think they'll look really lovely um, and then over here is just where we were um, working the other day we've struggled a bit with this area because it's very dry and it, the soil sloped downwards so it wasn't holding any water so you built up this wall I put a bit of the mud that we cleared from the stream from a couple of videos ago and tried to flatten it out a bit and then I'm going to add a bit more compost in here and hope that things thrive a little better here because the roses are definitely not doing well. We have got a couple of peach trees. I think they're peach, you all know. <laughs> um, coming in to blossom now. So yeah, I'm thinking maybe, um, maybe some lavender would do well here and some more of the creeping thyme. Uh, we did grow through a few cosmos last summer and they did really well here. They, they really thrive in this environment. I'll be keeping an eye on everything um, and then here is my strawberry bed so I moved all the strawberries up here about a month ago and they seem to be settling in 
and then I'm trying these are in the middle these dried out looking things are some petunias that I'm hoping will revive themselves as well and so here is my potting area where there's a few things on the go is the nasturtiums coming out some sunflowers um, and mum uh, propagated some roses and they're all doing really well I'm really impressed with how well they've come through um, some wild fennel seeds I saved from Nick and Andrea's last year um, tatsoi here which is like an Asian green they need to go out and some lettuce there and just a few other random little bits and bobs I've got on the go we've got in here these are more sunflowers they, they're growing so well at the moment oh my cumin's fallen over need to get some water on these um, I've got a few flowers in here like some zinnias some more broad beans pop some tomatoes in here um, and I think there's some aubergines coming up here which is exciting I didn't grow any last year and then I will show you the cool things we got off um, Gary so Gary gave us these are some more of the um, walking onions I've just popped them in in a pot but they need to go in the ground too um, but he also gave us so um, some artichokes which is going to be really cool to try growing those so we've got white truffle and um, some of the Chinese artichokes as well they're really long so I've put some of them in here probably should have showed you them before I covered them in soil but um, and then another plant called ochre which they look like kind of like little potatoes crossed with um, turmeric so put those in pots for now but I think I'll try them in the ground these are two elephant garlic so I need to get those in the ground too um, but so excited for those and we'll save some of the bulbs from those um, and then this is called stargrass so that's edible um, and he gave us some seeds for that too so I think he said it, it spreads quite well so I'll have to find a good place for that to happily grow maybe um, over by the other well and then he gave us a few cool seeds this is my seed box um, so I need to get these ones, so potato onions, just some really unusual plants and some that are more perennials, so I'm really excited to see how these go, uh, rat's tail radish, uh, yeah that's the stargrass seeds and I'm sure there was something else in here, oh and our friend uh, Janine gave us these, so I've got some coffee to try. I think they're really slow to germinate, so I might get those started soon in the greenhouse or in the kitchen. And some tamarind. And some uh, big loofahs. I had one of one loofah grow last year, and then it, it just, I think it came out too late and then kind of just rotted on the plant. Um, so hopefully I'll have a bit more luck with uh, those this year. I'm sure there was something else Gary gave us I wanted to show you um, but if I find it I will show you in the next um, garden video but yeah I've got lots of seeds to get out oh I've tried and um, Bee gave me some rhubarb so I've put a few of those seeds over in one of the pots over here so yeah exciting lots of sunflowers to get on the go we let the chickens free range when we're out in the garden and they absolutely love it but I have to keep an eye that they don't find my plants and seedlings. So I've struggled to find pak choy seeds but I've saved the ones we've bought from Lidl um, and just put them in water to root and some are doing better than others. Um, see that one's getting quite long. Um, when should I put them in soil? Because the first one I did just died as soon as I put it in soil. How long should I let the roots get? It would be very helpful if anyone knows if you could let me know. I'm trying to grow an avocado over here. I'm going to top that water up a bit. Spotted behind me what it was that Gary gave us. <laughs> Four of 
with his amazing homegrown butternut squashes and we made curry with one of these last night and it was delicious. Um, but yeah, thank you Gary for all your interesting plant. Hopefully we'll be able to exchange something more exciting with you soon. Um, and yeah, thank you for watching. We're off to Wales um, in the next, what is it, tomorrow? The day after. I'm getting confused with what day it is. Um, so yeah, it's exciting. I need to make sure everything's ready in the garden. Um, but yeah, I hope you all have a lovely weekend. Thanks for watching. Thank you for all your support. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Um, and yeah, we'll see you next weekend. Take care.